Meanwhile, the U.S. says negotiations are the only part to peace in Afghanistan, and all the parties must take them seriously. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said this during his meeting with India's uh, regional leaders in New Delhi. Security situation in Afghanistan is deteriorating since May when the Taliban renewed their attacks on government forces amid the withdrawal of foreign troops. Secretary of State Antony Blinken termed the spike in violence deeply troubling. Blinken said the violence by the Taliban against the Afghan people is not a good sign for the country's future. Meanwhile, China says it expects the Taliban can play an important role in ending Afghanistan's war and rebuilding the country. A nine-member Taliban delegation led by Mullah Abdul Ghani Barada met Foreign Minister Wang Yi in Tianjin. A Taliban spokesperson says the two sides discussed political, economic and security issues. In a tweet, Mohammed Naim said they assured Beijing that Afghan soil won't be used against any country. He said China reiterated its commitment to continue assistance for Afghanistan and its people. The spokesperson noted Beijing also pledged not to interfere in the country's internal matters. On the other hand, Russia's Defense Minister Sergei Shogo said Moscow is ready to provide Tajikistan with any assistance needed amid the Afghan crisis. Shogo added Russia, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan will also hold a series of drills in the wake of emerging threats. Meanwhile, Turkey has ratcheted up security measures in the eastern province of Van amid concerns over a potential new influx of migrants migrants into the country from Afghanistan via Iran. And uh, to talk more about this, we have uh, with us Lieutenant General Retired Ghulam Mustafa. General Mustafa, thank you very much for your time at Indus News. Firstly, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan says the U.S. has messed up in Afghanistan by looking for a military solution. So what's your take on this? I think that was clear right from day one when the United States entered Afghanistan. Uh, their decision was taken in anger. It wasn't a uh, very well balanced or very well thought out decision at that time. And ever since, it has been uh, compounding its blunders. And uh, over the last 10, 15 years, it was more than evident that the uh, U.S. is not going anywhere with the kind of strategy that it had uh, adopted, trying to build in the Afghans into submission. Uh, they are not the kind of people who could do that. Uh, they, they could do that. So I think Prime Minister is absolutely on the dot. And he said that uh, U.S. has blundered more than once. It had the opportunity. When it was slightly on the ascendancy, could have started negotiations then. And when finally did, uh, that was again not very well thought out, uh, the whole thing. Because while they were talking to the Taliban, and they had given them the recognition that the Taliban were looking for, and meeting them in Doha without uh, their so-called puppet regime in Kabul. And there was nobody from Kabul on the table at that time. So I think Prime Minister is on the dot more than once. General Mustafa, Prime Minister Imran Khan also says Pakistan will have to deal with a refugee influx if there is a civil war in the neighboring country, as Pakistan has already been hosting millions of Afghan refugees. What difficulties Pakistan can face if the situation uh, worsens over there? I think Pakistan has faced this kind of situation over the last three decades or four, ever since Soviet incursion into Afghanistan. And I remember being at the border at that time. It's a terrible mess that Pakistan had to face. Over, I think, 5 million of them in Pakistan, suddenly no space for them. Pakistan had to create the infrastructure to house and uh, host them. And uh, the kind of economic cost, the social cost that Pakistan is paying, and the socioeconomic system is Pakistan. The whole basics, uh, I think, have been disturbed and imbalanced in KP and elsewhere in Pakistan. And if it happens yet again, there'd be a lot of bloodshed. And as a result, if we have some more refugees, you don't know what kind of people you're getting now. Already, I think last night when Prime Minister was talking to that uh, scene and uh, that interviewer, he said that Pakistan is being blamed for supporting Taliban. Why the hell people don't understand that Pakistan just can't afford to do that? Because Pakistan is the only country in the world which is as affected, if not more, by what happens in Afghanistan. We have suffered over 700,000 people dead, so over 70,000 people dead, and billions, hundreds of billions of dollars lost. Who's going to make that up? 
So therefore, Pakistan, I think, has very serious reservations on the whole thing that the Americans trying to work out in Afghanistan. Also, the implications of and the fallout of what happens in Afghanistan if if uh, there is no peace settlement as soon as possible and all the stakeholders aren't on the table at that time. That, I think, is in Afghanistan's interest and Pakistan's interest. You know, the Prime Minister, I think, I, in the last interview, he said that the country which is most affected, and I, have, and I think most of us and all of us, I think, have been voicing this kind of concern, that things going wrong in Afghanistan directly affect Pakistan. General Mustafa, let's now talk about the statement of the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, who says violence by the Taliban against the Afghan people is deeply troubling. The U.S. has already escalated its air raids against the Taliban. What strategy, uh, strategy do you think the U.S. can adopt to stop the Taliban's advances? I think the best thing the U.S. can do is bring in some dollars, let some good people handle things there and get out of Afghanistan with all that forces and all that kind of a bombing that has been done. It has done that for the last 20 years. And But look what they got. They had to leave Afghanistan in a hurry. And more of it is going to spoil things further. They are hurting Afghans regardless of who they are, Taliban or otherwise. They are hurting the whole thing more than Taliban are doing. And if they let the Afghans sit down somewhere and they stop supporting one against the other, I think uh, Taliban and the stakeholders have suffered enough now to understand that peace is the only way out and the way to, for the peace is to sit down on the table. Uh, Americans have actually no strategy. They are lost for it. They only know one thing, that they have to keep this region unstable for as long as possible so that this region in general, the rest of the world, because of the connectivity which is coming up, should not develop. That is what the Americans want, and that is what they know. And they can kill hundreds and thousands of people to what they, what they want. And they have done that not only in Pakistan, they have done that in Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq, the world over. General Mustafa, last but not the least, China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi says the Taliban can play an important role in ending Afghanistan's war. So does this statement mean that China backs the Taliban in any sort of future government in Afghanistan? In a way, yes. Because Chinese understand that at this point in time, if there's one party in Afghanistan which has been given recognition by the uh, United States of America and the rest of the world had to recognize that are Taliban. They are the ones who are most organized on ground at that point. And they are the ones who are doing something at least, whether we like it or not. They are going about it in the method that they know the best. They are talking to the people, they are trying to convince them, and they have come up with now what they call an non inclusive system, uh, which has to be worked out by the Afghans themselves. And the Chinese uh, advisor, I think they are doing the right thing. And they are helping Taliban to understand that peace is the way forward because Chinese are the best at this kind of thing. They can negotiate uh, endlessly to get to a point that they want. Lieutenant General Retired Ghulam Mustafa, thank you very much for talking to Indus News. We really appreciate that.